Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Dieter and first of all, sorry for not uploading in so long. I know it's been a while, but I've been very busy making absolute bank or slightly above minimum wage. Depends on the way you want to look at it. Uh, today, we're going to be building a telegraph key, just like this one, for the spark gap transmitter we made in the last video. We'll get right into it and I hope you enjoy. All right, so to begin our project, we need some, some stuff to build with. I always pick wood, because if you haven't noticed, we do have a kind of giant forest right in our yard. So I always pick wood. You guys can use really anything you get, can get your hands on uh, to a certain extent, but I picked wood. I have a nice piece of pine here, and I like pine to work with because it's a very soft wood and it is pretty easy to work with. So first what we need to do is we need to make a board to start building off of. As you can see, it didn't work out that well first try. But I think if we give this side a split, It'll all be fine. Here's some extra wood we can work with later. But that's looking at least okay. Now we'll try to split off the rest of the wood. Start on this side because it's just a little nicer. It's a, a good idea to leave extra wood on your planks because you can always make it thinner. You can't always make it thicker. So. So as you can tell, We've got a plank, it does not look too good, but we'll clean it up and hopefully we'll have something we'll be able to work with. All right, so I've got one board. It doesn't look too great, but it's somewhat flat at least. And I also made essentially a mini board, kind of like a squared off stick. You're gonna need to make one of these two and then you're don't get rid of any of the wood you use to make your planks because that's the wood we'll be making everything else out of. So I'll try to put a picture of it on screen here, but there are three more pieces we need to make. Two side pieces and one pivot piece. So I'm going to be using this extra piece of the plank left over to get those. All right, so once you've rounded off your smaller rectangle, we come to the slightly more difficult part, taking the thicker rectangles. And what we need to do is we need to put a little notch in them, a notch big enough for the thing you just rounded off to fit in. One thing I would suggest is when you make these pieces, make them so that the grain of the wood goes the long way of your little rectangles. This is because, as I'll demonstrate here, with this piece of wood, if I wanted to split off part of it, like this, here the, on this piece the grain is going like this. If I wanted to split it like this, it's super easy. A piece just pops off like that. But if I want to split it like this, you see, you get a notch but it doesn't break. That's because the wood is really quite breakable with the grain, but against the grain, it holds together quite well. So with these pieces, you want to do a lot of work against the grain so that you don't split and break your piece in half. And then you need to make some more, which I may or may not have done. You'll never know.
So start with two cuts nicely and then wiggle your knife or whatever you're using. I suggest using a knife to pry up the piece in the middle. And then as you can see, you're already getting A little trick I found is instead of trying to use your knife and wiggle it like that, you can lay the piece on the side and kind of split it right in the middle. And that works quite well. Okay, so there are two more pieces of wood we need before we can begin building. One is a, well, these aren't actually two set in stone. You can do whatever you want, but one, I picked a nice square piece of hardwood, the same wood I built my table out of, and the other is a nice uh, round piece of pine, which I for, was from the extra wood I used to make the legs of my chairs. Uh, you'll see what these are for when we start building, which we will do now. All right, so now we've made all of our pieces. We move on to the construction part. So, we're gonna need some wood glue for this and you're also gonna need a tin can. Uh, but first we'll start with the wood construction. So, I'll first show you how everything goes together. Your little circular part goes underneath this to make somewhat like a seesaw. Your block goes on one end and the little disc goes on the other. That's why I said this isn't too important. Whatever you want, this, this block is just a counterweight so that when you push this side, the other side goes back down and the circle is just where you'll put your finger. Uh, so you can really use any shape. I picked hardwood for the block because it's heavier, it's more dense and I picked pine for the finger part because it's less dense, uh, which means there'll be less weight here and more weight here, which is what you want. Um, so yeah, let's glue everything together. While we're waiting for that to dry, we can glue on some of these pieces. You're gonna want these situated pretty close to right in the middle. And only, you can only put on one for now because the point of it is to trap that within here, so find a nice place, stick it right on. You want it closer to one side because you need to put the thing in between, so there needs to be some extra space. And now we need to let that dry. So, uh, all right, while those are drying, we can begin work creating the metal for the contact. I'm using just a, your average soda can, it works pretty well. First, we need to cut it into a sheet. I'm using this X-Acto knife. Uh, you should probably use a knife you're okay with being dull or you can sharpen well because cutting metal like this isn't the greatest for your edge, but that's okay. So once you've cut both ends off, you're just going to want to split it in half. I moved to a pair of scissors because it works pretty well. So now you've got a nice, decent sized sheet of conductive aluminum. Uh, it's getting kind of late. So I hope to finish this video today. But if 
you magically see me in different clothes and it's a lot brighter, that's because it's the next day. So we need some pieces. As you can see from the one I've already made, we need a small L-shaped contact and we also need a much longer contact that goes on this main piece. All right, I grabbed a Sharpie. So first we'll draw out where we wanna cut, makes life easier. So we'll start here at this end, or we can start here, here's a nice flat edge. And right around here, we're gonna to wanna to make a cut. That'll break this section into two pieces. That should be far enough, right? I believe so. And then here, we're gonna to wanna to make one strip. This strip can be nice and long. And we'll make a cut there to end it off. And then we'll make another strip right here. And this strip doesn't need to be quite as long. It can only go up to right around there and then we'll make a nice L-shaped area for the contact. Actually, we'll probably make this a little bigger all the way to there, but we'll see. And then for the other area, we'll make Kind of hard to keep this flat and draw. Oh. There's our basic outline of the other contact. So we need to cut these out and then, yeah. Okay, here's the first piece. As you can see, it takes the place of this piece. That fits pretty well. And we'll cut out the other piece. And this one didn't turn out exactly like I drew it, but I did, did want to leave some extra space just in case we make some arrangements later. So there we go. There are the contacts. And it looks like we'll need to wait a little while longer for the glue to dry. So I think I will finish this tomorrow. So the next step we need to do is I already put some glue on both of these parts and we need to glue them on. Glue the, this on here. You wanna leave some room in the middle where this can still move around. Maybe make it a little tighter so it doesn't move too much side to side, but its movement like this up and down is not restricted at all. And uh, now we need to let that dry. All right, and while we're waiting for this to dry, we can get started on some of the metal pieces. So as you can see, this little L piece we cut out isn't really long enough to hang off the end where you can attach a wire to it so I'm just going to change the design slightly. And it'll just work like that. So there's one contact. And you want to leave enough room on both sides of the stick. You want to leave enough room so that as it wiggles like this, no matter where it wiggles, it'll hit a piece of metal. So far, I've been using wood glue for the whole project. But because wood glue is great for wood, but not great for metal, we're going to move to, well, this is a Gorilla Glue, but any super glue should work. With this uh, Gorilla Glue, it says to dampen the surface where you're gluing. So I just did it with a paper towel.
let that dry for a little while. All right, guys, now that we've given this some time to dry, we need to start out putting on the other contact. And as I kind of explained before, it won't really work with this giant hump in the way. So we're going to need to get it off. But that will be kind of difficult because we need to get off enough of it so that the metal doesn't get bumped. But we need to keep enough on so that this little hole doesn't get, the, like, so that there's no more hole keeping it from going up like that. This also must be very careful when you're doing this because if you put too much pressure on where we glued it, it'll most likely break. So we'll try to do that and it might turn out well or it might not, we'll see. All right. So I'm just gonna start out with a nice line to hopefully kind of get the general idea of where we want it to split. And now luckily we are working with the grain of the wood. So hopefully this won't be too difficult. Ah, and look at that, came out wonderfully. Okay, so I just grabbed a pair of scissors and I want to widen this little groove here. I don't think it's strictly necessary for the per performance of this uh, telegraph key, but I do think it will improve how it functions and even just how it looks because or looks or sounds because that metal rubbing against each other every time you try to there's a plane every time you try to uh press down could be slightly annoying i'm also just going to snip off a little bit of that corner because it looked like it was coming in contact with the wood so yeah, as you see, it looks pretty good. Now, when we end up gluing it, we don't want to glue too much because over here in this area, we kind of want to leave it open so that it can pivot without putting too much strain on the metal. So maybe we'll glue right here and right here, but all of this area won't be glued to the wood. As I explained, that way, there's not a ton of strain on a particular part of the metal. The strain is more widely distributed. So, now we'll start bending. You need to be kind of careful with this can, with this aluminum from the can, because it really breaks pretty easily. So we'll make one bend right there. As you see, that gets us our second lead. And we do have a quite a bit extra material on this side, so we can split part of it off, or cut part of it off. Oop. And wrap it around. That way, when we push down, part of this can comes in contact with this can, completing the circuit, making tell it our, our spark gap transmitter that we built in the last video go off. All right, so now we're ready to start gluing the metal onto the wood. So first we'll glue, we'll wet down all the surfaces we need to glue. And uh, just get to gluing. I brought these small clamps because 
this will not dry very well without being clamped. Again, just just for fun. Put some glue there. And I have another clamp for there. That way those two places are clamped and then we'll clamp one last time. We'll glue one last time right here. It's very important that you make sure these two pieces of metal don't touch anywhere. Because if they do, the whole purpose of this device is kind of pointless. So you want to have one piece of metal not touching anything and another really weird loopy piece of metal not touching anything. That way when you push down, they'll touch And now, we'll let these dry. A lot of this time, we just spend letting glue dry. All right, and now that the majority of these pieces are glued on decently well, there's one last piece we must glue on, and that is the little button. So, little button will be glued right on top of this metal. Make sure you wet it down. Or you probably don't need to if you're using normal super glue. I'm not sure. Do whatever the glue instructions say. Put on some of the super glue. Clamp that down. And whoa, well, would you look at that. Once again, we'll wait for that to dry. All right guys, and now all the clamps have been taken off and we are done. As you can see, it works quite well. But now it's time for a demonstration with all the parts like the battery and the spark gap transmitter that we built in the last video. All right guys, I got it wired up. Um, I'll put the schematic on screen using magic because these tangle of wires don't adequately show how it's supposed to be wired, but it's quite simple. You see, it works wonderfully. So, yeah, it works pretty well. All right, guys, so you see that it works. Um, but here's a segment I wanna do more of on all my videos, is I wanna tell you guys 
what I learned throughout the process of making these things so that you don't make the same mistake I did. And I think this is a kind of important part of my channel, considering I have approximately z zero professional expertise, or really anything but a few books read about these topics. I really have no good training. So everything I learn is from making them. So a few things that I learned while making this so that you guys don't make the same mistakes. It's very important, especially when you're making these pieces here on the side, that you pay attention to where the grain of the wood is going. It took me a few times to try to make those right. Another thing, with this uh, aluminum from the soda can, it really, there must be a coating on it or something that keeps them from contacting really well. You need to grab a piece of sandpaper and sand them off or else it won't work at all. It just, nothing will happen. And that kind of annoyed me when I first set it all up because I was wondering why it wasn't working. And it was because there's a little film, a little layer of something on the can. Another thing is I would suggest that you glue all the metal parts onto the wooden parts first before you glue these wooden parts, well, before you trap this, uh, the actual arm, because it's much easier to clamp them down the, while you do it before it's, cl uh, it's glued onto the piece of wood than after. Uh, those are the main things I learned. I hope you enjoy and hopefully the next video will be about making a radio to receive all these transmissions that we now can make with our wonderful spark gap transmitter and our Morse code telegraph key. Um, I hope you enjoyed, thanks for watching and see you later.